it's Melissa. In this video, we are going to go start to finish on getting the brand new Roland BN220A set up. So this is a BN20A, which BN220A, I am going to make that mistake throughout this because the naming convention between the Roland BN2 and the Roland BN20 is so similar. So just excuse me, but know that I'm talking about the BN2. So this is the 20A, which means it's a four carriage uh, printer. The other one, the other model is the BN220. It has five carriages um, that can be used for either white or double magenta. Otherwise, the setup is exactly the same. So feel free to follow along. So there's, to be honest, not a whole lot of setup on the machine itself. What I will tell you is this machine comes in a large box. You can see large meaning very tall. You can see this machine is pretty tall. Now this is probably, this table is probably three and a half feet off the ground. This is about another 24 inches, okay? I'm five feet, so this is, I'm standing on the ground, obviously. So this is about how big this is. So the box itself is very large. However, it comes with a couple of straps that you can just clip, and then you will just remove the cover off of the box, and the box is actually has basically two pieces. So it is just going to essentially fall off. Once you take the cover off, you will be able to just remove the box. You don't need to cut it. And then the machine will be sitting in the base of the box with some cardboard pieces around it, some styrofoam around it. So you want to make sure that you remove all of that. Okay, so one thing that is worth pointing out is that there is not a stand for the BN2 models. At the time of the recording of this video, which is at the launch, of the uh, BN2 model. So I have mine on a workbench here. I will link to that workbench, um, which, which works perfectly. There are a couple of different models. Mine has actually a shelf below that you can put two rolls of 20 inch wide uh, material. So basically 40 inches wide. It works perfectly for this. It's heavy duty. You can get it on uh, caster wheels if you want. Mine is just stationary. So just keep that in mind. So once you get this on the table and it's basically in this setup, that is where we are going to start. So before we do, there's a couple of things that you are going to need that do not come with the machine. First of all, ink. If you did not buy a bundle that included ink, you need to get that. I will make recommendations on where to get ink. Of course, I recommend getting a bundle that includes ink so you have it right out of the gate. Well, another thing that is not included is an ethernet cable and that is required. So get an ethernet cable. I would suggest getting a long one. You can use the ethernet cable one of two ways. You can connect the ethernet directly from the BN2 directly into your computer. And in th that case, you will likely also need a um, little converter. What is this called? Adapter. Okay. Or you can have this close to wherever the ethernet port is in your office or your home. This, that's, it's always conveniently located, right? And then you can connect the machine directly to the ethernet cable or the ethernet port. I, my ethernet port is far across the room. So I'm using the method to connect directly uh, with the BN2 directly to my machine. Okay. So the ethernet cable goes over here on the side. One thing that you'll notice about this machine is everything is front loading and front operated, which is perfect. Okay, so you connect your ethernet cable, then you have your adapter if you're going into your computer and you'll connect that eventually to your computer. The other thing that you will need is then the power cord. Also, the power cord goes over here also on the left hand side, right next to the power button. That will then be connected, obviously, to a power source. And then you will have your power, your main power up here. Well, that's the main power. This is the operating power, essentially. You want to keep both of them on. So that will eventually light up. So you'll get that blue light that's flashing. Now, before we do anything, I want to show you a couple of things about your machine. Up here, this is where your print head is. You really don't need to access this on a, on a regular basis, OK? Down here, you have what is a waste tank. So this waste tank is different than previous models in that it comes in a carriage like this. This is 1.8 milliliters. And what it does is when you need to replace the waste tank, you only need to replace this inner bag. You do not need to replace this entire piece, okay? So that's gonna save you uh, some money and it's more eco-friendly as well. You hear it beeping? That's because I have the waste tank out. Okay, so let me 
put this back together. The waste tank will come installed on the machine. Okay, waste tank over here. Then you have your cover. Now, inside here is obviously where you have the print head is going to be moving back and forth. We're going to get to how to install the blade. We're going to get to all of this stuff in a few minutes, but I do want to tell you this over here is where the ink goes. Okay, I feel like Vanna White. This is where the ink goes. Now, because the print head is going to extend into this area, you can only use the 220 uh, inks, okay, the 220 inks. So this is where the inks are going to go. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to install them. Yes, mine are already in there, but I'll show you that as well. But right now, I'm just showing you all of the different areas of the machine. Now, down here, you have a separate area, and this is for storage. So basically, there's four parts, two on each side, alongside the, the printer itself for various things. And this part down here is going to be for storage. You can put um, the cleaning fluid that comes with it. You can put more extra ink, which I would suggest that you get... Um, a double set of ink off the bat so that if you run out, you have it and you don't stop your production. Um, so that's all there. Now, as far as the setup, there is going to be some tape that you need to remove from the inside part of the machine. So do that very, very carefully. You're going to remove all of that. You also are going to need to uh, add the blade. So I'm going to show you how to add the blade. We're going to show you how to put the um, inks in. And then we will, I will show you how to add the roller bar, which is, has a newly improved mechanism for locking and is pretty easy, very easy actually to use. Let's go over everything that comes with the machine. And there's not honestly a whole lot. You've got the roller bar. You've got that waste tank that we talked about. You've got the blade carriage and the blade. You have a cleaning, a cleaning fluid bottle along with some foam swabs. You've got a wiper and you've got an extra um, blade for uh, the cutting mechanism, okay, or the auto sheet cu cutting mechanism. If you have extra inks, you can place them down here into the storage area. And that's also where I am going to put um, all of my cleaning supplies and other little supplies that came with the machine. Now, this piece was originally up by the print head it, for while um, the machine was being transported. So you are going to take that off of where it originally is and you can keep it right here for storage. It says on there, this will be needed when you will repackage the product, keep it. And so there's a little spot right there that you can keep it. It's super nice that you have this little storage area. Okay, and the final piece of the puzzle to put the actual machine together is to load the media roller. So this is how it's going to come in two pieces like this. So this piece over here is has that new locking mechanism. It's an easy lock system. So that is actually going to be on the outside. So this is going to go in like this. Now, keep in mind, if you have a 20 inch roll, it'll be about here. If you have a 15 inch roll of material, it'll be about here. So wherever you need to put it for now, that's fine. Um, what you're going to do is this, these two sets of rollers here are going to go over this way. So the larger roller goes here, the smaller, excuse me, the smaller roller fits right into this slot with the roll, with the um, bar itself fitting here and here. Okay, I do have a separate video for how to load the machine because as you know, the machine, this machine actually loads from the front. That is why it is so, such a great feature to be able to have full frontal operation because you don't need to get to the back of the machine like the older BNs um, or the other model BNs where they are uh, rear loading. This one is completely front loading and the material will come up this way and then come up out of the top here and go under the pinch rollers and that is how you're gonna use. Okay, so let's now hop over to the computer because the rest of the setup is over there. Okay, so one of the only things that you will find on the back of the machine is your serial number. So you will need to grab that serial number so that you can register your machine. Then what you are going to do is you are going to come over here to the other side of the machine where you are going to have a QR code that is going to send you to get the manual and the downloads. 
At this point, you are ready to connect the ethernet cord and power on your printer. And now we will get ready to download DG Connect through that QR code link. That'll bring you to the BN2 website where you will first click software and that is going to prompt you to register your machine. So put in your serial number and then tell it that you want to find your machine. It will locate your machine and then it's gonna ask you to register the warranty. So put in all of your information. It will confirm that you have done it correctly and then you wanna go back to that same page and this time you're gonna click software and it will populate. Now mine is empty right now because this is prior to the launch. So you'll have some things listed under both manuals and software. So you're going to click software and it is going to give you a list of things to download. The nice thing about the Roland BN uh, 2 is that there's only one installation that needs to be set up. So what you're going to do is find your in your downloads. It's called Roland DG Connect Setup. So the DG Connect is the only thing that you have to download, and then everything else will be installed from there. So find that and then open it, and then you're going to click the application setup. And it's going to ask you, do you want to extract all? You're going to say yes. You are going to select the destination and click extract. And this is going to go through um, the installation process to download DG Connect. That is going to end up being the hub of everything that you are going to use. So now you have DG Connect set up. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up a window. In that window, again, it's asking, do you want to allow this? Yes, you do. Um, I have already done this, so we'll see how far it allows me to get. It's telling me that I need to, uh, requires the following items to be installed. So you'll click OK and install that. OK, so it's now installing. And the hub, DG Connect Hub, again, click yes. You're going to, you can see it's doing all of this for you. Okay, so this is your Roland DG Connect Hub. All right, everything that you need to operate and run your D, uh, Roland BN2. 20A and 20 is going to be in this hub. So what you're going to end up having here, it's gonna load in a few minutes, you can see it's saying loading. Um, what you are going to have here is four things. One is DG Connect. The next is going to be the utility. Then you're also going to have VersaWorks and you will also have Flexi Designer. Now, they will all say uh, install, once before you install them. Once they say install, they're going to say open. Okay, so we will start with the utility. And when we click open on the utility, we are going to get this box that is going to walk us through um, a lot of the setup. So you can see here, it's asking what type of ink are you using? Confirm that you are using EcoSol Max 2. Yes, then it's going to give you this warning. Sure, to put on protective eyewear. What? Don't worry, I didn't actually wear protective eyewear, but it is going to continue to walk you through. This time it's telling you that you need a manual cleaning prior to when you are going to do the next step, which is going to prepare you before you put the ink in. So let's hop over and I'm going to walk through this process with you. First thing that you are going to want to do is you are going to open this up and with the machine off, you're going to actually move the print head out of the way so that you can see the capping station here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a little bit of the cleaning fluid, you're gonna dip one of the swabs in there, and you are going to gently clean. It's not really cleaning because it's brand new, but you're basically prepping around the capping station. So you're gonna dip just a small amount, you don't need to saturate, and you are going to clean around the capping station. Now yours won't have any ink on it. I've already done this, so that's why mine is doing this, but you're not going to saturate it or anything. You're just cleaning around that area to kind of prep it, okay? So that it gets a little bit of uh, like moisture on there, essentially. You'll also push the print head all the way over to the opposite side and you will use another cleaning swab to put some cleaning solution right here on the sides. Be very careful, you don't want to actually touch the print head itself, just again on the sides here. 
okay? So that basically preps everything. And then what you're gonna do, you can move that back out of the way. And now we are finally ready to load the ink. So keep following the uh, instructions through the utility. It's gonna walk you through step by step. And of course I will as well. All right, before you add any of the inks, you wanna shake all of them for uh, 30 seconds or so. Okay, and then you'll pop them into their coordinating position. So you've got black, blue, pink, yellow, or cyan, magenta, yellow. Okay, and these will go all the way in. You'll hear, there's not really a sound, but it'll push, you'll hear it kind of click into place. Once all the, of the inks have been popped in there, then the ink filling will start and the software will tell you the progress as it goes and it will also tell you while it, when it's complete. While we're waiting for that, I just wanna reiterate one thing that we talked about before. Okay, so again, this is the reason, again, you saw that print head came over here. If, and I'm gonna just show you so you can see again, if you had um, the larger extended carriages, you can see that it would hit specifically on the magenta and the yellow if they were coming out here. Um, the print head, which needs to come into this area in order to get the full 20 widths and also to do the auto sheet cut, you can see here's the extension of where that track is that the print head's on. This is why it is so important. I can't stress enough. Do not be tempted to use those larger print um, inks, okay? And again, we're gonna to return to the utility. And again, it is going to tell us the next step. And in this case, it is that we need to load the initial media. So this loading process is gonna be the same for all media, but this one we're doing the very first time. So let's try it. Okay, so you have your roll of media here and it is hanging over the front like this, okay? So what you're gonna do is you are actually going to pull it this way and there's two there are two arrows underneath here, and that is where um, the sheet is going to go. So we will place the material up. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna come across the top, come through the top, okay? Now, it's really important that you listen for the two beeps. This bar needs to be completely up so that the material can run through underneath the rollers. Now, you're gonna listen, you're gonna pull, you hear that vacuum? Once the vacuum comes on, you're gonna pull it a little bit more until you hear that second beep, okay? Once you hear that, you wanna make sure that this roller here is, under, is on one of these blue spots, okay? This is any position that this left roller can be on. This is an eight, uh, 20 inch material, so we want it to be all the way over. This roller here is stationary where the blade is set. You wanna make sure it's pressed completely to the right and can't go any further. Once you've got that, you're gonna take the uh, lever bar and press that down and the vacuum will turn off, okay? Then you wanna make sure that this is taunt, okay? So watch here, it's, you can see it's pulling it, not too taunt that it's going to buckle this, but taunt enough that it is not, um, uh, set like sagging essentially. All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to return to the utility. Okay. So now at this point, the setup is continuing through the utility. It's going to do an initial nozzle check and calibration. Again, it's just going to tell us to keep, um, it's telling us exactly what it's going to do. It's going to tell us that we, if we press okay, it is going to move forward with um, the nozzle check. So output means basically print. Here it is showing us that it needs to wait for the dryer and the heater to get up to temperature. Um, I would recommend that you wait, but if you get impatient, you can click skip. Just be aware that that may affect um, the initial printing, um, especially if you are well below the recommended uh, temperature settings. All right, and now what you are going to do is it is going to begin printing the pattern. So the pattern in this case is the nozzle check. Uh, it should come out pretty well. This is the first time printing on your machine. However, as you know, if you are missing any nozzles, then you will wanna do a normal cleaning. I wasn't missing any, so I am just going to be able to move forward and click okay. Now, 
it is now telling me that the uh, adjustment is now going to be in progress. Again, these are all things that in prior versions you had to do manually. In this case, with this new utility, it's giving you advanced features and doing it all for you. So the adjustment is going to print basically a grid and that is going to use a sensor to read that grid and then make adjustments as needed. And here we are printing our uh, pattern adjustment at this point. This is an automatic sensor adjustment that is printing. Uh, and then we'll be, we don't even need to analyze it ourselves. Again, the machine will do that for us. All right, now we need to do a blade adjustment. So first, before we do that, we need to make sure that our blade is installed. So I will show you how to do that. On the other side of the print head is this locking mechanism here. This is where the blade is going to go. So once you have your blade together, you are going to place your blade in there. You will put the blade like this, so the blade piece down, this is essentially what is going to keep the blade in place. This locks around the blade, okay? And then you will pull this little screw over and twist. Once the blade's installed, then again, return back to the utility and click next. That will bring you to this page for the blade adjustment. Again, it's telling you exactly what it's going to do. It is going to cut a small circle with a square inside of it so that you can test the cut settings that it has. It's giving me a warning here that I have my cover open. So just close that and then I can click output and it will begin cutting that very small circle, which is just going to take a second. If it weeds out easily where the square is left behind when you pull out the circle, then you are good to go and can move on to the next um, adjustment, which is going to be the print and cut adjustment. This is going to print a black square and then cut a square around it. Again, you are going to evaluate it. If you're good to go, you can then click OK and continue moving on. Now, when you are finally done all of that, you are going to get the confirmation that the initial settings have been finished. It's going to prompt you to see if you want to register the new media. You can go ahead and do this or you can skip it. I have a whole separate video on that, so I'm not going to go over it here. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to return to the um, DG Connect Hub and now we will install VersaWorks and Flexi Designer. Okay, so once you're in VersaWorks, go to the printer menu and click printer settings. Then you are going to click the plus sign to add a new printer. Click the button to search for the printer. And when it pops up, click select. Then you will want to enter a nickname. I'm just going to call mine BN220A. Make sure that the port is selected as TCP. And then when you're ready, click verify. That is going to create the drivers. Ask If it asks you if you want to create them, say yes, and then click apply, and you will see that your new printer will pop up in VersaWorks. The final step is to install Flexi Designer. So do that from the hub by clicking the button. What you are going to get is this activate the new license or prepaid subscription. So put the activation code that came with your software into this uh, bar here and click activate. What that's going to do is prompt you to create a new account. So go ahead and create an account and then tell it that you want to add it to your cloud by clicking activate now. Then you're going to go over to the Flexi Designer website and you'll find all of your um, license keys right here under license. So under actions, click view, and that's going to give you the option now to download download Flexi Designer. And now you will have the ability to open up that software on your computer. Just keep in mind, all of this stuff is PC. Okay, guys, congratulations. That was no small feat, I know, to get everything set up. But now you are ready to print and cut with your brand new Roland BN2. So I have, of course, lots of videos on every step of the process. I have videos on how to use Flexi Designer with it, how to completely bypass VersaWorks, how to uh, do your first print and cut, uh, everything you need to not only get started and grow your business from there, but also things that you are common questions, frequently asked questions. And if there's something that I don't have, 
feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email and I will put it on my list of videos to make. So of course I am here to help you. I have tons of videos um, on VersaWorks, the, the same VersaWorks uh, videos that worked for the BN 20 and 20A will also work for the BN2, of course. And if you're looking for more, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help, I do offer that as well through Silhouette U. Uh, so just tap the link and you can start a seven-day free trial and then you can message me directly and we will get you going. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.